Exploring a cemetery for family history information can be a rewarding experience if you know a few things about how to do it and what to take with you. That's what we're talking about today on The Road to Your Family History. Thank you for joining me for this video, fellow roadie. Thank you so much. Hey, before we get started, I'd like to do a quick shout out to some people that have recently left me some kind comments. Luis O, Nicholas D, and the genealogy archaeologist. Hey, I appreciate your feedback. Now, first of all, if you haven't seen my last video about doing research before going to the cemetery, then you have to watch that one. It's essential, really. I'll have a link to that down below in the uh, video description, okay? Now, let's get to the tips for actually going to the cemetery. So what did you take with you when you go? Well, maybe the most important thing to take with you is, well, another person. In my last video, I said that some people think cemeteries are spooky places and that I did not think so, but we really have to consider safety, especially since some cemeteries are in out-of-the-way places. I visited one cemetery where I had to go down a small rural uh, two-lane road, then turn onto a small dirt road through the woods that had rocks and ruts in it. I, I went down this dirt road for about half a mile or so before I got to the cemetery. Now, the cemetery itself was very well kept, but there was nothing but woods all around. Now, luckily, I did have my wife with me. Uh, now, an added benefit to having another person with you is that you have another set of eyes to find the grave site that you're looking for or grave sites. But so, what else should you take with you? Well, keeping with the theme of security, it would be a good idea to take a whistle or air horn to signal your partner if there's any possibility that the two of you will be out of eyesight of each other. Well, even if you're within eyesight of each other, uh, you know, you may be a good ways apart, so having that whistle or air horn would be a, a great way to signal them in case you, one of you find that grave site you're looking for, or if there's some other reason, if you get hurt, or you know, any number of reasons where you need to notify your partner. Now, it's also a good idea to have some sort of communications capability, although I think most people will have cell phones. But if you believe you may be in, a, in an area that does not have cell service, then walkie-talkies would work. If you use walkie-talkies, please uh, be sure to take extra batteries. So let's move to the subject of comfort during your visit. Uh, it is important to wear secure shoes. Uh, no flip-flops or sandals because you never know what kind of terrain you'll find. Once again, this comes from first-hand experience. Plus, you should wear long pants for that same reason. In addition, it will aid in preventing sunburn and bug bites, which reminds me, a hat, some sunscreen, and some bug spray can also make your visit a whole lot more comfortable. Now, another item that can come in very handy is a first aid kit. Now, maybe you already have one in your car, but if you do, how old is it? Now, this kit can be very useful for minor scrapes, cuts, and insect stings, so please have one on hand and not an old one where the antibiotic cream is expired and the uh, band-aids are all dried up, especially if you keep it in the car, that, that can happen. A dried up old band-aid that doesn't stick, hmm, yeah, not, not worth it, believe me. Now, Bottled water in a small cooler will ensure that you stay hydrated. You need to stay hydrated. Even if it's not warm or hot, cemetery exploration can really dehydrate you. Once again, knowing from experience. Now, uh, what kind of tools do you need to take with you? Well, first of all, a very soft brush in case you need to brush away debris from the stone. Uh, now, this is so important. Please ingrain it in your memory. Never, never apply anything to the stone. Do not apply chalk, powder, uh, soap, 
a whipped cream, nothing, because it will damage the stone. Also, please do not use a brush with stiff bristles, and certainly not a wire brush. These will definitely harm the stone. Now, one caveat I'll make, there is, uh, there are some things that are specifically made for cleaning headstones. Uh, now, you might want to check those out if you think that you're really going to have to clean an extremely dirty headstone. Now, a good thing also to take is some grass clippers. Now, they can be manual ones or battery operated. Now, you can use them to clear grass that's growing in front of the stone. When the groundskeeper cuts the grass, they will not usually trim around the stone. Some, some cemeteries will do that, some will not. It depends a lot on the, the size of the cemetery. Now, something else that will come in very handy is a kneeling pad. Uh, if you need to kneel in front of a stone to look closely at it or use your soft brush or to take a picture maybe, this pad will protect your clothes and cushion your knees. My father-in-law used to uh, advise me about this all the time. He was a, an auto mechanic. He used to get on his knees a lot, and he regretted kneeling on those hard surfaces uh, for years. So he always, he always advised me to have a kneeling pad for when I need to kneel. Now, uh, speaking of taking pictures, let's talk about that. Now, I'm sure you want to take pictures of the headstones of your ancestor, right? Now, you can use your phone or digital camera, but I would not recommend using the old school film cameras. Now, those cameras can be great, they can take great pictures, but with a digital camera, you can take many different pictures without having to be concerned about using up your film. Not to mention the headache it can be to try to change a roll of film when you're outside a cemetery. It might be a sunny day, so, yeah, that's just, yeah, don't, don't deal with that frustrating situation with a, a film camera. So, how do you actually take the pictures? Well, make sure that the option on your camera to record the GPS coordinates where the pictures is turned on. This ensures that you can physically find the, the, the location of the cemetery or the gravestone again, and that you can find it on a mapping app like Google Maps or Google Earth because you might want to look at that or you might want to show that on one of these mapping apps to your uh, relatives, your family. Also, make sure before you even leave for the cemetery that your camera is fully charged. Now, it would be a great idea to take a handy device called a power bank with you. Let me show you one of them. This is what it looks like. This is how small it is. It's no bigger than your hand, I have a pretty big hand, but this is a device uh, that you charge at home or at a hotel if you're traveling maybe, that you can use to recharge your phone anywhere. Now, there are different sizes of them, but they can usually charge your battery at least once. Most of them could charge your battery two or three times. Now, this one I have, and I, I, just, I bought it not too long ago. Uh, and I got this because it says it'll charge my phone for maybe five times, which is great. Uh, and the price was very reasonable. It had great ratings. So hey, take a look. I'll have a link to that down below too. But yeah, boy, you can just charge your phone anywhere when you have that. Now, when you take the pictures, the first one you should take is the entrance to the cemetery or a sign that identifies the cemetery because that way you'll know that the pictures that follow were taken in that cemetery. Now, you'll think that you'll remember where you took the pictures. <laughs> you will not. Now, once you start accumulating pictures from different cemeteries, uh, you will not remember. Believe me, especially if you're on a research trip, and you end up visiting, uh, say, three, four, five, or more different cemeteries, you will start to mix them up. Maybe even not immediately, but a few years or 10 years or so, or more down the line, it's going to get difficult. Now, if you had your GPS turned on, that's going to help tremendously. Next. When you find your ancestor, take a picture of the area around their marker, just to get an overall view. 
Then take a close picture of the stone from at least two different angles, preferably three, uh, maybe even more, because you may be able to read the stone more easily on one angle better than the others. Then check the stones around your ancestor. They may be related. If the ancestor you're searching for is a male, you may see the same surname on the other stones. Now, even if you don't know how you may be related to those people or how your ancestor may be related to them, do it anyway. Take those pictures. If the ancestor you're searching for is a female, nearby burials may be related but not have the same surname because it could be her married name. Now, she could have sisters that married and then would have their husband's surname, so there's another surname there. But regardless of any of these factors, take pictures of several stones all around your ancestor. At some point, you may discover that these people are related in some way. If you want to read more about researching in the cemetery, a good book would be The Family Tree Cemetery Field Guide. Uh, find a link for it below in the description. Now, this book will also show some symbols you may find on the headstones in the cemetery, which can be very helpful to you. And finally, one last word. Treat the cemetery with respect. Leave it neat and clean. Don't leave trash, please. If you happen to find trash, even if it's not yours, pick it up and dispose of it. Don't sit on stones or put your feet on the stones. Hey, now that's my dad advice for this video, okay? Now, have a great time finding your ancestor's final resting place and be safe while you're doing it, please. So I'll see you next time on the road to your family history.